Hey there, everybody. We're live, and we've got a guest on today's show. Uh, our good friend Blake Zimmerman has joined us to take the place of both Gabriel and Darren. <laughs> Actually, um, it's just both. <laughs> um, Gabriel will be here so shortly, yeah. but uh, Blake, thank you for uh, stepping in and being on the show for us. Um, we're talking about something that maybe Blake isn't as savvy on as maybe somebody like Gabriel is, because Gabe does this quite often. But having, and Blake and I were just talking about this a few minutes ago, having Blake on as somebody who might ask the questions of uh, somebody who may not have any experience with a light box and so on is a valuable asset, I think, to a show. Uh, getting that contrast to what other people might talk about, getting good questions. And when I think of somebody with an interesting free mind, Blake's the first guy I think about. <laughs> so I'm glad you're here, my friend. Thank you for being on. I know it's the second time I've seen you today, and you're probably sick of me by now, but... Never, never, man. <laughs> I'm right. the one who jumps on your bus at 2 in the morning and spends hours in a combined bus with you guys, going yeah. up, having a blast. Oh, and... it's great fun. Oh. Well, actually, we're going to talk a little bit about one of our day trips. Uh, this past Sunday, we went to Niagara Falls. And a little bit later on, when Gabriel shows up, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Great day, perfect weather. The group that came with us was all fantastic. Our driver was fun. It was just a really fun trip, and I can't wait to do the Niagara trip again. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll do it next year. We'll see. It's been since 2011 since we've done it. So maybe we'll do it in a couple of years. Maybe we'll do it next year. Depends on the demand. So let us know if you want to go to... Niagara Falls with Day Tripper, and we'll make it happen. Okay, so what is a light box? I've always wanted to do a little bit more with light boxes. Um, what we're talking about today with light boxes, per se, are those little boxes you put on your countertop. They have soft diffuse panels. You shine your lights through it, and you can take pictures of products for food or um, anything that you want to sell online. A lot of people use it for stock photography. Uh, they're constant lights. They just turn on and off. You don't have flashes or anything like that. Of course, you can do that. There's a lot of amazing um, food photographers. and um, Like my friend uh, Frank Cotrera, Chef Frank Cotrera. Ross and I interviewed Frank for our TV show on Rogers Cable. And it was an interesting experience watching him work in his studio. But that's way beyond what we're talking about here today. I mean, uh, did you know Frank Blake? You ever met him? No, I have not. Uh, okay. I don't think I have. I've... <laughs> I'm not he sure. Buy all kinds of stuff from us at the store. Henry's, of course, now he has everything, so we don't see him very often. Uh, <laughs> but excellent chef. Uh, he invited Ross and I over, and he made us dinner, and then we went to his studio. And just watching how somebody works in a professional environment doing food photography, it was really eye-opening. Um, a lot of the same techniques you can do when you're talking about a light box. I mean, you're diffusing light. You want clarity. You want clean clear light. I don't know if you heard that. My wife is obviously having a laughing fit in the other room. Uh, <laughs> these mics are pretty sensitive. You never know. Anyway, squirrel. Um, first squirrel of the night. Wow, look at that. Anyway, uh, already? I know. It's with, what's with me? So anyway, we did the show and we interviewed Frank and I learned so much about how to get clean light on food and other product. What is a light box though? Why is it so popular? Why do people love these things? My answer to that, they're pretty easy. When Frank was using his setup, he had a rack full of accessories. He had dishes. He had all kinds of crazy stuff, uh, backgrounds, different colored boards, so much uh, accessory-wise that I don't know anybody other than a chef who's been doing it for 20 years would ever have that kind of stuff. So getting these little light boxes are super convenient. In fact, we're going to talk about a few in a minute, and some of them even come with a disc where you can download all these backdrops that you want and layer them in through the computer. That's so, pretty handy. Very handy. Very cool. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, before we do that, though, um, the trip to Niagara Falls, there was a lot of interesting situations there. Um, as far as natural, clean, soft light, it was one of the brightest, shiniest, sunniest days <laughs> of the year. Uh, so there was no soft light, per se. There was no natural diffuse clouds, as a lot of people posted to our photo challenge for soft light this week. Uh, they used the clouds as a diffuser, which is brilliant. That's exactly what's out there. As Mark Flinders said, you know, it's a nature's softbox. So, absolutely. We didn't have that up in Niagara, but we were indoors. We were taking pictures at Bird Kingdom, and we were down in the basements of uh, the wine cellar, sorry, of Inniskillen Winery, and I believe Julie, well, yeah, Julie posted one of those photos from the winery for the photo challenge, which was yep. really cool. Um, so we'll talk about that as well. 
Now, before we get to all of that, first, uh, Ron makes a comment here. Hi, guys. Holding off getting a light box because you only had one flash. Now that I have a second one, I think it can make it work. Lots of options out there. Um, full us in. I think you meant fill us in. Yeah, fill us in. Yeah. I will fill you in, and I'll let you know more about these things. Now, what we're talking about isn't necessarily using flash, though. Flash is a great way to do it, and you can definitely use those. What we're talking about is constant on lights, um, what yeah. we call hot lights. You turn them on, and poof, there they are, like my lights that are on in that room right now. So flash is a lot different technique, obviously. You have to have the right modifiers. You're shaping the light a little bit differently. Um, why don't I see if I can pull up what one of these light boxes looks like? And I had all these things saved here. Actually, do you have the notes open there, Blake? I do. What are we looking for here? Uh, just pull up the top link to the light boxes, and I'll pull up the second one, and we'll be able to just bounce around a little bit if you see that. So first I'm going to do a quick screen share here. And this is a pretty standard entry-level light box kit. This is what I'm talking about where you get, this is a tabletop kit. Two little lights on, a, on tiny little stands that you can plop up on a table. You get a nice soft box that you can put your stuff inside of and you get a couple extra accessory colors. Uh, this one's about 16 inches by 16 inches and it's collapsible so you can fold it nice and flat, take it anywhere with you. And that's pretty much the whole point of the count, like the tabletop kit. Now you can see lights, everything included. It's only one ninety nine, two hundred bucks. Now, I say only two hundred bucks. I mean, you could build light packages for probably a lot cheaper. Um, but this is convenient because it's all built up and it's right there and it's easy to buy and set up in a matter of minutes. Now, what Blake has up here is a little different kit. This one, this is an older kit that we used to sell at Henry's there. Um, I find it probably the best value because they actually have the stands that can go up and down. I think they go up about three and a half feet. You're on still. Oh, I'm on my screen. Oh. <laughs> okay, stop the screen share. There we go. Thank you, Blake. <laughs> so, yeah, basically what we have here are two light stands. You get the soft box, and then the soft box, there's a bunch of different colors as a backdrop. Super straightforward. The stands, uh, the light shines right through the sides, and you fit your product inside. And then, of course, there's the biggest one of all, the beefy version. And I'll pull this one up here on my screen share. And here we go. You know, it's funny. I was watching a hangout of another show the other day, and the guy was trying to get his screen share to work, and he was humming and hawing, I can't get it, I can't get it. I swear, it took so long, I had to stop watching the show. <laughs> so that's my big fear. Either talking too much and squirreling too much, or taking too long to do a screen share. But I'm squirreling uh, now, so I'm going to stop. And we're doing good. <laughs> we're now, doing good. Um, yes. I was just going to say, it's like you see what these are now. Like you can put these on a table. We can have them, I guess, slightly bigger and, and things like that. This one, advanced photo box kit. All right. So what makes this one advanced? Well, the actually the stands get it taller. They're about six and a half feet. Um, it comes with the disc where you can actually load your photo that you've taken into the computer and change the backgrounds and do all that. Some instruction, um, and again, it's just a, a compact system. So essentially, you're paying $150 for taller light stands and the DVD with all the backdrops and the software to go with it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. might be worth it. Yeah, it could be. So why would we want to use one of these compared to uh, other lights like... Um, for example, like the Bowens or the or using your off uh, off camera flash and why why mostly, do we use these? <laughs> mostly convenience is what I would say, and the soft box gives you a very soft diffuse panel. But before we get to that, time out. Gabriel's back. Can you hear us, sir? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you too. Welcome to the show. Oh, now you're muted. Now you're not. For having me again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and you again, for again. spending the past 12 hours saving some somebody's existence in life and then having to rush back and be on our show. Oh, yeah, well, the icing on the cake, after everything that I complained to you about on the phone, I decided, okay, I will go home. I will do the show from home instead of doing it from a customer's again. And I walk out the door, and it's, like, just pouring rain. <laughs> oh no! Like the the big heavy raindrops yep. that that just say you know 
through you and everything <laughs> about you with every drop, and it's just <laughs> worth, worth three blocks away. Uh, so <laughs> I'm running down and I'm holding the box over my head and I'm like, hold it. This contains six hundred dollars worth of hardware that I have to return tomorrow. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Today was just a total catastrophe. So uh, oh. just, yeah, it's and yet here you are on the show, killing it. <laughs> here I are. Well, thank you very much. Well, the this worst part is I was supposed to be at Google I/O today. I was supposed to be in Waterloo at the Google's head office up there, you know, hobnobbing with Google executives eating Google sushi, and I ended up, uh, you know, troubleshooting uh, a network <laughs> attached storage device for ten hours. So. And the root of all evil, the Drobo. <laughs> yeah, I think I am um, uh, shifting away from Drobo a little. But, uh, it just seems like everybody I know that's owned a Drobo has had problems. Yeah. And they're catastrophic. I mean, they're big deals because you have all of your data there. Yeah, I mean, Drobos are um, re redundant software in themselves. They are fantastic when they're working great. But as I found out today... Um, because their proprietary file system, when they go, oh, oh man. Well, you know what? That's all in the past. Now we're talking about fun stuff, and I've got to say, stuff. I've got to say hello to somebody who's watching this, and I don't know if it's the first time you're watching, but Jack Torcello or Torcello, I hope I pronounced your name right. Um, first of all, yes, you're right. The picture of the Henrys is too small to be useful, and that's not only for you, that's to every single person that goes to the Henrys website says the exact same thing, including employees who have to go to it for reference. That is something I hope Henrys fixes relatively soon, and there's no way to make that photo larger. So, uh, unfortunately, I can't really seem to find these photos any larger anywhere else to display, and I haven't brought the kit home to take pictures of it myself. So, I hope you bear with us, Jack, and thank you for watching. You're watching from the UK, I believe, and uh, I was checking out some of your photos earlier. Amazing black and white work. Very cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, I even liked one of your videos, I think, with Pentatonix. Great group. Love listening to those guys. Anyway, I know, Squirrel, once again. What's that, four squirrels so far tonight? Blake? Something like that, yeah. I like yeah. squirrels. Yeah. Actually, Shelly was out back feeding the squirrels earlier today. That's why I've got this rig set up right now. Um, <laughs> I was taking pictures of her back there, and... Trying out my new little bean bag on the window ledge. It was pretty handy. Nice. Yeah, resting my lens right on top of there. What a great little tool this thing is. I might, uh, I might market these. You never know. I'm kind of crazy like that. Anyway, back on track. Back on track. Talking about soft boxes, and, and Gabriel, you have a lot more experience than both Blake and myself. So what, what do you do where you would use the soft boxes? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't go yet. I haven't said. If anybody's watching this after the fact on YouTube, if you like our show in any way, shape, or form, click like on the little like button down there. Share the uh, videos to other people. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be a part of the show by joining in the Q&A right now, as Jack and uh, Ron have already done. And be a part of what we're talking about. If you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, we're on here for about an hour and a little bit, and maybe a little bit longer now because I blabbed on so much. But it uh, should be fun. So let us know if you have any questions. <laughs> Thanks. And Gabriel, back to you, my friend. What do you use light boxes for? I don't really use light boxes at all. Onward and upward. Let's talk about <laughs> the next topic. Uh, <laughs> no. So, uh, with my jewelry shooting, um, when I first started there, they wanted everything on a gray background. They wanted it to look like everything was shot in a safe, and it's a terrible, terrible idea because it draws, it sucks all the life out of the diamond, and it makes the band look you know, dark, and they couldn't figure out why the pictures didn't look good. And finally, finally, I convinced them to go on an all-white background with a, um, a light box. And so the light box basically just you fire light into it, and as light does, it bounces all over the place. Well, I'm sorry, what does it do? I missed that. It bounces all over. Okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, when you <laughs> light into the light box, it bounces all over the place. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it makes for uh, pleasant lighting on the side of the band. It can help it, it can help bring out the sparkle or dull the sparkle in some diamonds, uh, depending on the shape and the cut and the quality of the diamond. Or uh, but if you're 
um, shooting with a light box. Uh, I'm giving the example of jewelry here, but like I spoke about last week, if you're doing just a bottle of conditioner or head and shoulders or something like that, um, uh, it, it ca helps you cast an even light um, on whatever, whatever it is that you're shooting. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big trick with anything when you're getting into stock or product photography is even, clean, smooth light. Uh, I applied to iStock Photo about eight times before I was finally approved. And on one of those times, I had taken a whole bunch of photos of jelly beans. And I thought I'd gotten the best lighting. I was using my flashes. Everything looked great to me. I submitted it, of course. The lighting wasn't even enough. So if I had used a softbox, it might have probably helped me out quite a bit. But I was using just my flash and trying white cards and bouncing and... <laughs> All this other stuff didn't work so easily, and that's where I think the light box is so handy: is that it's convenient. You can just set it up, set your lights up, and make some shots. Um, what about the difference between the soft box? Now, Blake, you were kind of thinking. Oh no, I think uh, Gabriel. Sorry, you were originally thinking our show might be more about soft boxes as far as portrait lighting and so on. Right. Um, what's the difference between a soft box and a light box? Well, I mean, I usually use soft boxes with light boxes. Um, but the difference between, the main difference between a soft box and a light box is that a soft box um, goes beside your object, whatever it is that you're shooting, and it usually has a white baffle and, and helps disperse the light or diffuse whatever. Um, I know uh, our friend Ross is watching the show going, it doesn't do this, it does that. I it's okay, Ross isn't watching. Right. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, no, that's <not> bad. <laughs> uh, whereas, whereas a, a soft uh, a light box goes around your whole entire subject. So, if I were shooting this coffee cup, um, a soft box would go here and fire onto it, creating some soft light. Whereas a light box, it would sit in the light box. It's basically, it's a white. It's a, a, a white sort of box made out of material that diffuses the light. So you usually have the diffuser on your softbox, and then sometimes people even put a diffuser between the softbox and the <clears throat> excuse me and the light box to diffuse the light even more, uh, and then you have the light box. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's a great tool to have. It's easy to set up. It's easy to use. Um, mm -hmm. A couple examples that I've used these, my wife is a baker, she makes amazing treats and cookies and all these things, and there's been a lot of situations where I have had to um, take some photos of these for any kind of promotion, whatever. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Shelly's Baked Goods. <laughs> uh, yeah, i got to be careful what I'm talking about, Shelly's Cookies, because <laughs> it can come up sounding a little inappropriate at times, but... Um, we're not talking about Shelly's cookies right now. We're talking about treats, bakes, and goods, and things like that. So thanks, Blake, for getting me in trouble now. And You're welcome. <laughs> I just walked right into that, didn't I? Yep. Um, oh, Don Hennessy just says, if looking online, it's also called a light tent. Actually, a light tent mm -hmm. is could be the same type of deal, but it's also a completely different thing. We have light tents at the store. You basically hang them from a hook above, and they drape down, creating a longer, taller enclosure. Oh, okay. So it's a very similar concept. It's to the same end, but they're just a completely different design um, for different purposes, of course, but same concept. You fire the light from outside to the inside. The light bounces around, bounces <clears throat> around, and goes all over the place inside the box and lights it from all sides, getting rid of shadows, very much like this shadow right here, if you can see that. We've got this box shadow. And if I had a soft box going right now, or if I had my other light from underneath, it would get rid of that shadow. So that's what the soft box does, is it bounces around and fixes that. And the only reason I don't have the light from over here, like I usually do, is because it's freaking hot in here, and my air conditioning's not on, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right. So thank you, Don, for that. Yes, light tents are very cool. Um, and Blake, you are the official squirrel control, Marjorie says. That's an impossible job. <laughs> that's a good point. Also, Marjorie, I still owe you a prize. I'll um, be seeing her on Saturday. The, a couple for, from the other week. This is yours, Marjorie. I have it right here, and I should have given it to Blake when I saw him today. 
I'll Sorry pop by that. tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I'll be at work. I'll bring it with me. Um, awesome. Any way to pump up Gabriel's volume? Hey, Gabriel, pump up oh, the volume. Yeah. Pump up the volume. Pump up the volume, Jans. Dance, dance. <laughs> Sweet. All right, and uh, Jack, you're welcome. Thank you for commenting and for being on watching our show from England or from the UK. Um, what is this? Uh, light tent cube opens up like a big you know, reflector. Is that, is that better there? That's better. Coming to you live from KPPY. Why? Because we love you. It's the Late Show with Day Trooper Photo. Okay, you have had a rough day today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, light tent cube opens up like a big reflector. Seems very easy to take with you. It does. It's like a big reflector. It's exactly what it is. The the light tent basically, when you fold it all down, you just flop it together and it goes into a reflector bag. And there's the cube that we're talking about in these packages fold up very much the same way. Blake, were you gonna say something? Um. No, when we get back over to talking about what you can do with the light boxes and such, like what, I was just thinking one of the other benefits from it is the fact that if you take your big light stands and everything else and you're working with them, it's really hard to adjust your lighting. When you actually have a light box, it's like, hey, you're moving something back and forth within there to create your shadows or to uh, get rid of them. If you want backlighting, you just move it a little bit you know, farther to the front of it. One of those things where you, come, when you actually want to control the placement of your lighting also comes in really handy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's perfect. <laughs> All right, so that's that's the thing about the light box. You have to be convenient, you have to be quick, you have to be easy. You have to make sure that these things give you natural light. Now there's a lot of ways to build these kits. Um, I showed a couple examples of the Henry's packages and yes, I'm sorry, the, the pictures are very tiny. Um, so it's hard to tell what they were, but ultimately as Gabriel said, and we've all said, it's a box, you have lights from the sides. Some have tall stands, some have short stands, some are tabletop. What I really prefer and what works the best for me is more powerful lighting. I actually like quartz lighting. Um, it's very much daylight balanced. It looks very clean, very rich, and you can get very powerful uh, anywhere from 250 to 750 watt quartz lights. And if you put a diffuser on that, as Gabriel mentioned, you know, you put a diffuser on the light first and then shine it through the diffuser, it gives you even softer light. So if you could do that, you can fill up much larger boxes. So we were talking about a 16 inch by 16 inch, there's 12 inch by 12 inch. My recommendation is if you're going to get one of these, get the largest size. That way you can take pictures of all kinds of things. Um, one shoot I was taking pictures of uh, Shelly's treats and snacks. Uh, shh, Blake, shh. And, um, <laughs> and I had a, a funny moment happen to me. I was sitting there and taking some pictures, and I took the cookies out, and I looked back, and my cat was inside the box. So it was the best photo of a cat, of my cat, that I've ever taken. Crystal clear, nice even lighting on all sides. Um, the back vignette was created because of the distance between her and where I had the lights set up. It was just a, a very quick shot, and it was so random. If it was a smaller box, she probably wouldn't want to go in there, and I wouldn't have this photo right here. So, oh, by the way, I did clean the box after she got out before I put cookies inside because that'd be gross. <laughs> Not like my cat's dirty or anything, but, you know. So anyway, that's another way to use light boxes. Take pictures of your cat. So one thing that I would say, um, not all light boxes are created equal. Um, while they are a, a relatively simple design, um, you are going to be moving it around a lot. You're going to be opening the flaps a lot. Another thing, too, is look for a light box that lets you shoot in multiple ways. The light box that I have uh, has a zip-up um, uh, sort of door in the front, Velcro doors in the side, plus a Velcro door in the top, because for a lot of light box photography, um, you're going to want to be able to shoot straight down on the light box. Um, a lot of light boxes are just square cubes and that's not always the best design because um, when the light hits it, um, if it's more rounded, the one that I use has rounded corners, rounded top, rounded sides, um, just about the whole thing is rounded except for the back which is flat which is great for putting up different color backdrops and stuff. Um, 
There you go. So the one that Brian is showing right now, now that's an open-ended one, and the one that I have, it's more rounded, and it has a little zipper thing in the front where you can just shove your lens in and shoot right through that if you if you want to. Um, a little bit more like that, but again, that's more just a square. Right. Uh, These are the smaller. You probably have a larger version, a little bit more yeah. sturdy sides. I'll see if I can bring up a, a picture of, of what we use in in my studio. Um, but look for something that's going to give you some options, some diversities. Look for something that's stable. Um, and, oh, and the other thing is if you're shooting shiny objects, make sure you check out the frame before you buy it because the one that we use, the one that for in our the company and in their infinite wisdom, uh, is completely white except it has a, a black frame on the inside. So the whole frame, the metal rod's holding it up and then there's a big um, uh, kind of bracket in the middle for support and you can put a camera on it. It's all black. And so if you're shooting a ring, like a really big uh, gold or, or silver ring, all that shows up in, in the reflection. So I have to get like little post-it notes and post it on all the things that are showing up or, I mean, it's, or, or Photoshop it. So if you're going to, I mean, if you're shooting head and shoulder, shoulders bottle, it doesn't matter. It's not going to show up. But if you're shooting anything reflective, whatever the framing of your soft, your uh, light box is made out of will show up in your image. So keep that in mind. Interesting. I was just about to mention, uh, ask, it's like, why would you want to, uh, you know, where you have the zipper door, and it's the same type of idea is that if you stick your lens in there, you'll get the reflection of your lens on whatever it is you're shooting, where usually those little zip-up doors and such, if you keep them tight and stuff, it helps reduce that. Exactly. I was That's watching... Uh, Sorry, I was just uh, I was just saying I was watching Scott Kelby doing a car shoot and he had like little holes cut out in the like those massive white backdrops and stuff. He's sticking his lens through there just so he didn't get the reflection coming through. I was like, exactly. Man. And I have a whole system set up with foam core, uh, where I have different foam core uh, sheets with holes in different places, um, so that you know if I'm shooting down, I need the hole at the top. If I'm shooting. Uh, straight on, I need it in the middle, and I just I set everything up, and then I put that over the lens, snap the picture, and then there's very little to edit out later. Awesome. Awesome. I think Brian is muted. Yes, he is. Yes, I was muted. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me no. now? No, I can't. <laughs> no, no, I think what the point I was making is uh, it, the less edit you have to do, the better. Especially when you're shooting um, yeah, tons of jewelry. Yeah, but everything, the less edit you have to do, the better. Um, but everything needs editing. True, but the time it takes to edit out simple things or enhance certain things and right. you know, tweak certain things is a lot different than removing frames and glare and reflection and all that yeah. stuff. Just don't, don't feel like you have to get it 100% um, right in the camera. Uh, and, and that you're cheating. I mean, there's uh, some jewelry photographers that I follow on Google+, and I look at their stuff and the things that they post, and I'm like, oh, my God. It's like, that's just incredible. Like, I can't – none of my stuff looks like that. And then they show the before. I'm like, oh, that's how my stuff looks. Yeah, before <laughs> I edit it. Right. right. But you're like, how did they get it to look like that? And it's because now, you know, they're shooting more higher-end stuff, so it's – you know, an hour to shoot it and four hours of post processing, um, sure. which I I wish I was I had the luxury of doing. But well, that's uh, the before and afters are incredible. That's kind of my point. Like when you have a studio and that's your main job and that's what you're doing all the time. Like Alex, um, Blake, you you know Alex yeah, from the Yes, uh, that's what you guys are talking about. Yeah, phenomenal yeah. work. Hey, right? I'm shooting with a Hasselblad right now. Shut up, Alex. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but well, a lot. If you look at his setups. You know, I know. So he'll show you this incredible, incredible setup, and it's like fifteen dollars worth of foam core. Yeah, he, he does like the. He's really great because he goes back and forth between uh, going. Here's my, you know, hundred thousand dollars setup, and here's my ten dollars setup, yeah. and he shows you the shots, and you're just like, how do you, what? Because <laughs> he he flops back, like he'll switch back and forth. And he's like, yeah, you can set this all up and get this lighting and do all this if you understand this, this, and this, and this, and he shows completely how to do it. And his homemade, you know, soft like light box compared to his 
full studio set up and, you know, he's shooting with different cameras and stuff like that. And he does a lot of iPhone uh, photography as well, which is, and he get, he's showing that he can do product shots with an iPhone. I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. Well, it's, again, we, we've said this on many shows. It's not always the tools you use. It's how you use the tool. Mm-hmm. And he has a higher understanding of settings and composition, and he has a very good vision of what effect he's trying for. And yeah. if you have that kind of understanding and vision, then knowing how to use your equipment, you'll be able to do well with it. Um, and that's, I think, a big thing that, that Gabriel's so good at is that you can have this equipment. Like you've had to, I, I, I've been hearing the stories about the jewelry photography. You've had to go through a lot of trial and error, um, and most of the error was from the people who own the, <laughs> the jewelry place. Because well, they, the, the, the mean, equipment is a vision in their mind of what they want, and it's dumb. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, it's not just that, but the equipment that they supplied you with isn't yeah. necessarily equipment that you would have chosen. Not you know, ideal. You've no, had I mean, to. First of all, it's an icon. Um, but no. <laughs> it's the wrong one. It's okay. Oh. Forgive him. Forgive him, Schwartz. It's okay. <laughs> of he knows course. what he says. So you know, you're probably photographers using Canon, so you know. You... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, squirrel. Cool. So, uh, yeah, lots of cool things you can do with these boxes. Learn how to use them. Um, open up your imagination, and they really do give you soft light. Now, soft light leads us to our photo challenge this week. Uh, we issued the challenge, uh, Darren's idea to choose soft light, which is funny because he didn't even know we were talking about light boxes this week, which is right. weird. Darren's got this psychic thing going on. Um, it's like psych- he's got ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> he must have ESPN. Maybe that's what he's doing right now, watching ESPN. Anyway, um, so the photo challenge this week was soft light. And we're going to start talking about those photos in just a second. In the meantime, why don't um, you, Gabriel, and Blake pick your top photos from the photo challenges? Because I know you've been busy and uh, probably haven't had a chance to do it quite yet. I have not. I'm actually. I'm just going through quickly. My. I might have a picture here of my setup. At oh, okay. Jewelry. Um, He's giving away secrets, people. <laughs> ah. We always give away our secrets. Yeah, I love giving away my secrets. It's like Doncom. Uh, I mean, you when you oh, know yeah. something and you're really good at it, you can help other people make great photos and not f- have fear of losing your uniqueness. Yeah, oh, it's like say, a... hug all the photographers around you, and they'll hug you back. Yep, well, this is one of the first things I learned from uh, watching Trey. He was uh, Trey Rockcliffe. He was really big on sharing all because he can't stand the old the old curmudgeons who are sitting there going, "No, I can't tell you anything. I, you know, you gotta have to pay me to do it." And he's like, he's like, here's the information, but uh, mm. he, oh. you know, he does make a he does make some money off of it, but he has a lot of free stuff as well, which is really handy. Yes, free stuff is handy. And I'm waiting for him to get to Toronto. Oh, we'll talk about that. Uh, cover at all the non-destructive editing that they just added in Google Plus? No, we didn't. But that's no. not a bad idea to get into. But do you have that photo of your setup first? Um, okay. How about uh, Blake goes through his favorite first? And I'll scroll through here and try and find it. All right. Sounds good, Blake. Yeah, okay, so I'm looking for. Oh, do you need the photos I guess shared? Sure. All right. All right. Is that what we're doing? Yes, we're doing the photo challenge. We're going to give our top three photos. Now this week, the winner of the top three photos, or the the overall best photo, is going to win the entire prize pack of lens pen accessories. Um, lens pen accessory prize pack includes the DSLR Pro Kit. And all my other things are tucked away. I feel horrible that I don't have everything out and ready right now. I feel all stressed out. Look at me. I'm stressing right now. Can you tell how stressed I am? Um, <laughs> but the lens pen stuff is awesome. We used so much of this on Sunday. Hey, Gabriel? <clears throat> oh, yeah. It was... Well, yeah, especially by the falls with all the mist and switching lenses inside, going from fast to zoom. And, yeah, it was, it was great. It was amazing having having those tools right there handy. Um, this is the biggest saver of the day, by the way, and this is included inside a kit like this. Most of the kits yes. are giving. 
Um, there's the sensor cleaning kit, there's the lens pen kit with the three, and then there's the single lens pen, which we're giving all of this away, and it's going to be a lot of fun to the winner. Um, but these claws, when we're walking awesome. by Niagara Falls and everybody's camera is getting soaked because of the mist and stuff from the falls, it was a beautiful day, but it was still misty everywhere. We were wiping our cameras down with this. I must have shared this with three or four of the people on the, in the group. We were all wiping our camera down. Every single time, it got all the water off, the water off the lens, and now it's just as clean and dry and soft as it ever was, even going through all that. So, you know, to Martin and to the people over at LensPen, guys, thank you so much. This is a really great asset to Day Tripper Photo, not just to give away as prizes, but on our day trips uh, that customers can use through the whole day. So that was a real big... One has got to be the uh, the one for cleaning the viewfinder. Um, <laughs> I should do that more often. The little one. I have a laptop bag that I put my camera in, and it goes in lens first, and my viewfinder. Like every time I go up to it, there's some dirt in it, and you got to mm -hmm. take your like felt cloth, wrap it around your finger, and just go yeah, and try and get it into corners and stuff. <sighs> Never works. And, it's a pain in the butt, and and their their lens pen for cleaning the viewfinder is pretty awesome. Little guy, yeah, uh, I use I use all that stuff. It was it was great having them on the trip, and I mean even when we were putting on the circular polarizer filters, I was looking at everybody's filters as I was putting it on, and they all have this halo around the edge. Do you ever see that from your filters? All around the very edge of the glass, there's this halo, and with a cloth, all you end up doing is packing that halo more towards the edge. So you whip out the lens pen, you get that all off. Awesome stuff. Anyway, thank you, Lens Pen, for that. That was awesome to use on the trip. Uh, Blake, Marjorie yep. is asking Alex who? Uh, Klauskopf. And he's, uh, for Marjorie, look in the Arcanum, uh, Grand Library. She's in there with me. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's a product photographer, and uh, I'll see if I can... I'll add in his name to the, uh, the event afterwards. Just some amazing work in there. Yes, he does. All right, on to our photo challenge. All right, so are you at the bottom of the list there, Blake? I believe I am because we go into yep. food, we go into other stuff. So, yes, all right. And so, speaking of Marjorie, here we go. <laughs> yeah, there's your photo right there. It's like you've done this before or something. No, actually, I have not. <laughs> I've not done. I have not run a day tripper uh, photo challenge session yet. <laughs> This is your inauguration. I was going to say it in another way, but I'll leave it at that. Um, thank you very much for doing it. And Marjorie, this photo, the first thing I thought when I saw it is it didn't look like soft light to me. But then Blake pointed out the shadow on the petals below. And uh, that makes it clear. It is nice, soft light. It's very even. That's what, that's what like, you're used to. I guess we're used to seeing that, that soft light come across and fading in shadow. This is very even all the way across. And it's really hard to catch that shadow underneath because it's barely even there. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's a great shot. Thank you, Marjorie, for that one. Um, and... somebody's, uh, somebody else is doing cats. Well, we all love our cats. So Mark, his photo. Let's see. Does he say anything about it? He says, my submission for weekly photo challenge, soft light. This is Nitro, a.k.a. The Jerk, posing for me at the top of his cat tree. I used Gary Fong diffuser to soften the light. The Gary Fong does a pretty good job. I mean, for, for a diffuser that you can just pop on and use in any lighting, it really does a decent job to wrap that light around. Um, you can see even the back guy has nice light on it, even though the flash was in front. And, uh, yeah, excellent. I saw Gary at the Exposure Show in uh, one of his little sessions. That guy knows his, like, like because he makes the equipment, but God, he's oh, yeah. good with it. <laughs> he knows his Tupperware, I'm telling you. Yep. Good stuff. <laughs> and we're not getting sponsored by Gary Fong now. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for sharing that one there. And the one above that one, there you go. Excellent shot here by Rhonda. And Rhonda for soft light used flashlights for this, I believe. A little candlelight, some wine and cheese, and a 100-year-old book. Time to enjoy the soft lighting and relax created by painting with light while standing in the dark. 
That's clever. You know, a lot of people are going to this light painting technique these days. I love it. Uh, we've taught it quite a bit on our day trips, right, Gibro? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And this is a, another great use for it. Um, another use I saw that I really liked was our friend Ross Chevalier, the photo video guy. He's doing a book series, uh, photos like book covers, and he had his uh, pistol and holster and a bunch of other stuff, and he lit it all really, really nicely. And um, just, I'm, I'm really liking the effect. And you can see, you can put light anywhere you want it to go when you're light painting. Um, she did, she did like, quite a bit of work on this one because. 20 second exposure F22 to cut the light out and let the light paint like so she could light paint it. Mm -hmm. Also for the depth of field, having yeah. F22 gives nice focus from the back of the book to the front of the cheese. Like she did, she definitely picked out her settings properly and did a really nice job lighting because you know it it doesn't look particularly like overly uh, light painted, but it's just very nicely done. I agree. Very nicely done, Rhonda. Thank you so much for sharing that one. Oops, man, me All right, moving up. Moving on up, moving on up. Is that... Uh, Jordan. I don't think that's a weekly challenge photo. Uh, no, Are it's in there. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, it is it's in there. Yep. I'm sorry, Jordan. There it is. Still stuck on last week's theme. Yeah, that was for, for lazy. Oh, oh right. <laughs> Too lazy to check the, the spelling of the sign. <laughs> All right, so let's go to Julie's photo. And Mark, I love my Gary Fong too. A lot of people really don't feel that it, uh, it's the right product to use for a lot of things, but it works well in a lot of different situations, for sure. All right, what do you think of this one, Gabriel? Let's see here. I like it. How do you feel it applies to the soft light challenge? Well, there was a lot of light coming in. Um, I remember that room, and there was a lot of really yellow light, um, and it was it was kind of all flood light. Everything it was just a cornucopia of orangey <laughs> yellow light. Oh yeah, and, bad mix of light in there too. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, it was really challenging to shoot in there. So turning that into black and white made for a nice effect. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, so it also turning into black and white. Actually, turning into black and white made the light look a little bit less soft than it actually was. And that's uh, my thought as well. I, I kind of what I was telling Blake. It's it's more contrasty with the black and white. Yeah. yeah. Um. In in the in the original version, it, all the the colors sort of spilled in, blended into each other. Um. But you can still see. You know, there's a soft reflection on the floor. Right, and then, mm -hmm. and then you can see the light sort of tapers off on the on the top. It's it's yeah. nice. Um, I wouldn't say in in this edit it it um, completely says so. Well, there's some tapering on the barrels there. Mm -hmm. You know, on the tops there, you can see it's a little bit it, it's dispersed. Right, it's kind of like shining a flash onto the ceiling and then using the the reflected light. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I, I, you know, I would say def I would say with the with the lighting on the floor, the reflection on the floor, which I love. Mm -hmm, me too. I don't think I even noticed when I was in there, and then the way it's wrapped <laughs> in the barrels, and I definitely, you know, the shadowing on the edges of the barrels, I'd say it captures soft light. Sure. Well, Julie's processing on this photo really did bring out the texture in the floor, and as you say, like we were both there, and there were some great lessons going on there about white balance and all that. Um, yeah. But I don't think. I noticed that texture on the floor as well. But I would think that probably Julie really started to notice it when she started working on the edit. And a lot of times yeah. when you're yep. when you're doing this process and say you're using Nick Silver effects or on one or whatever, um, as you start to manipulate and massage the photo, you start to see this texture and this detail come out and you're like, Ooh, what did I have here? So yeah. um, hey Brian, uh, yes. just thinking with uh, this photo, I'm gonna a bit of a Ron Clifford uh, lesson out here. Um, one of the reasons why it, it kind of catches our eye, if you notice there's a really white, like the lights uh, that you can actually, the first set of lights that you can see, and then right afterwards you have that really dark shadow, and then you have another bright light, and then you have shadow, and then bright light again, right? Mm -hmm. That's, uh, as Ron loves to point out to us, the highest area of contrast, that really dark spot and that those bright lights, 
draws her eyes to there, which may, and that's an area where it doesn't look as soft because we're going from bright light to really right. dark really quickly. Um, and that's the lighting in there probably is really soft, and it's just the fact that that draws your eye to it. So that's a good this, point. like it's a because the soft lighting is beautiful, like it's, like Gabe was saying on on the, across the floor on the barrels, the barrels. but yeah. our eye is drawn to that one spot. And that's where we're kind. Of, that's why it's kind of we don't catch the soft lighting right off the bat. It's Man, Ron, run your you are a smart him. guy. I, I think we should Sensei hang out Ron. more. <laughs> 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 no, very nice stuff. And Ron Clifford is uh, a, an amazing photographer, excellent instructor, a uh, real inspirational guy. And I'm going to be talking with Ron very soon uh, because of other things. So it's very cool stuff. Yeah. And yeah, thank you for mentioning that, Blake. Good he tip. In, he. He's beaten that into all of us, I think, by now. So, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, all right, Mark's got another submission there. Yes, we have another couple photos. Now, this is just not fair. <laughs> I mean, anyone? Look at these. I just bought strawberry jam the other day, hoping to even remotely think I'd have this kind of flavor going on. But this looks much better. You guys strawberry fans? Yeah, oh yeah. Big time. Yeah. So the soft light, as Mark says in this photo, was the second and third entries for the weekly photo challenge. Soft light. I used nature's light diffuser, clouds, to soften the light today while picking these tasty morsels. Well, save some for us, Mark. That's all I have to say. I like this if shot, you, actually. Uh, if you are a strawberry lover, Costco has, I mean, strawberries that big. And usually, like, the bigger the strawberry, the, if a big strawberry doesn't taste as good. I, I mean, they're just, you bite into it, and you're just like, oh, God. Where do they come <laughs> from? Oh, God. Are they Canadian grown? Um, I, don't, I don't know, but they're in my <laughs> belly. I mean, they're in my <laughs> belly. <laughs> it's all about Canadian grown. That's what I'm talking about. Costco, um, Costco will go local first, yeah. even if it costs more, and then they'll and then they'll branch out if what they're looking for isn't available local. Good to know. It's one of the reasons why I shop at Costco. And their cool. meats are freaking delicious. Oh, their meats are so good. Yeah. The squirrel meat. The squirrel meat. <laughs> squirrel. Yeah, squirrel. We're on right now. <laughs> All right, back to Mark's uh, strawberry photo. Mm -hmm. I like the composition in this one, the greens and reds with the path right up the center leading to the hands. It works really well for me. And having the soft light from the clouds and there's no harsh reflections off the green grass. I like this one. Complimentary colors. Again, thank you, Ron. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Any thoughts there, Gabe? Um, yeah, didn't I already comment? That, oh, right. No, I was just talking about strawberries. Yeah, no. <laughs> me, I like that. Yeah, and you got it in the shade a little bit, and it's got a couple different angles. It's nice. Yeah, it's it's, it's you know they're they're not uh, um, light box masterpieces, but they're 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 a um, a good uh, what was lifestyle photography. You know, it's 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 well thought out and well taken in the middle of something he was doing anyways, which is nice. Man, look at what cam well, what camera he was using. Um, all I know is that it's the Leet. Samsung. Elite I'd say it's a cell phone. It is. I've had I'd this. Say. What's that? I think I've had the same phone, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the SGH Leet M. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the color, it's amazing how the colors come out with these the, the phones these days. Like, we've oh. talked about this before, and she's like, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been doing more and more, uh, I guess, uh, not iPhoneography, uh, Android, Androidography. And, um, yeah, really, really impressed with uh, what you can just get from a phone and then a little bit of basic editing. I've been loving the, the new editors in the Google Plus software. Uh, it's very Nick, um, kind of where you can do control points and you get a lot of control and then there's your filters which we all know is Ross's favorite thing in the world mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it's been a lot of fun 
Why uh, would Google's editing software have Nick involved in it? I wonder why it'd be very Nick like. I want. Yeah, that's true. It does use Nick stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, let's keep on going up the list here. This lazy guy out here. He, he's taking a picture of. What's that? Some lazy guy who's not here. Oh, right, yeah. Nah. No, I wouldn't call Darren lazy, that's for sure. <laughs> so he says, found some soft light and wished to shoot my dog. He does not want to shoot his dog. He loves his dog. Uh, I use the leaves as my diffuser. However, in the fall, I will have to rake them all up. Soft light in the summer means hard work in the fall. <laughs> Typical Darren quote. That is like, I can actually hear him saying that. Yes. <laughs> He's got the cutest dog. That picture there, I don't see soft light. I see speckled light. I see terrible family portraits. I see hours and hours of editing. It works great on a dog, but you can even see, you know, it's, it's nice and, and soft on the, the face, but you can see there's a light splotch on the back, and then the the, the rear hind, the hind quarter is, is grayed is uh, shade, shaded again, and it works fine with the dog because, you know, it accents the highlights and stuff, but for people, that is a death trap. You know, it's funny what I, what they say, how dogs look like their owners. This is such a Darren dog. I love that dog. It's very gray cute. hair. <laughs> yeah, gray hair, <laughs> you know, comfortable laid-back kind of look. Looks like it's got expression. <laughs> I was actually thinking intelligent <laughs> expression. <laughs> he is going to come back and kill you. <laughs> Grumpy. <Yeah. laughs> oh, Grumpy. and training. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Mark says um, he brought some to North Bay with him. He's talking about the strawberries uh, mm. tonight. They are delicious. Picked at Visser Farms in Bradford. Hey, well, trip to Bradford. Let's go. And the photo was a Samsung S4 with some Lightroom with some edits in Lightroom Five. Nice, cool. very good. It always seems. I mean, I've done it myself, but it always seems weird taking a a um, you know phone photo and dropping it into Lightroom. I feel like all the other pictures <laughs> are staring at it, going like, you know, what are you doing here? <laughs> It's you're not you're not ready for this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, love you. Okay, we say that about you all the time, though. <laughs> oh, Z. <Yeah. laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I'm gonna get it next time. I know. That's all right. I love we, this. We picture. can take it. I, I love the uh, I love the concept and the execution of this one. It's very cute. So she says, "Hi, all. Here's my take on soft light. Um, note: I use an all manual eight millimeter fisheye lens, hence the wrong focal length in the photo details." Interesting. Yeah, it's it's very <laughs> soft light, and it's nice that she's creating the light to be soft by using the toilet paper. My fear is her burning her house down. That's <laughs> well, all. I think it's it's like, you know, I'm picturing a bunch of kittens running into it now. Like <laughs> the, the the toilet paper is supposed to be that cottony soft stuff, right? That's always advertised by by uh, little fluffy kitty cats or, or puppies or something like that, and she's wrapping that around a lot, a light to make the light soft. So I think I thought that was pretty cute. Very cool. I doubt the light's actually on. It looks like most of the light's just coming in from the window. Yeah, it does look like that, but I don't I know. It's on. The rim from underneath on. it. <laughs> but if you do, I mean, if it is on and it catches on fire, man, you suffer for your art, man. You suffer for your art. <laughs> It's for the greater good. It's for the greater good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you, Louise, for sharing that one with us. And Jordan has another photo. A lot of people grasping the concept of clouds being soft boxes. I like that. I do too. Uh, Jordan says the soft lighting provided by the very overcast skies on Tuesday, June 24th, helped nicely with this photo as I shot a charity golf tournament. The fact that it didn't rain during the morning was also very much appreciated by the golfers. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think um, shooting in that kind of weather is probably best for photography. Not a lot of harsh shadows, uh, especially when we're talking about something like this where there is a lot of reflective light off the, 
the golf clubs and you know white hats and white pants and so on and so forth. Um, that can be very hard to shoot if you don't have proper light diffusion. Now, an alternative idea, if it wasn't a cloudy day, you could always get a huge um, scrim or or a, a reflector you can shoot through and just hold it over the golfers when they're playing. They love that. They love it. It's just my take on it. Is that not true? Uh huh. Okay. Maybe that's not the best way to go. So maybe only shoot golf when it's about to rain. There you go. Okay. Cool. Uh, and more than not when there's lightning. Occasion, walk out on uh, we're doing an engagement shoot or something like that, and you're like, oh, isn't this great? You must be so happy. There isn't a cloud in the sky. And you're like, yeah, it's the worst possible scenario. <laughs> I know, especially on a golf course. Yeah. A couple <laughs> people just got, well, one person I think was very badly injured just uh, last week with that big storm that we had. The four people, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, that's a Darwin Award right there. I, I'm, I'm sorry for what happened to these people, but that, that's a Darwin Award. Yeah. <laughs> a Darwin Award? Well, yeah, I mean, apparently <laughs> they have huts set up all over golf courses, um, little sort of wooden sheds with lightning rods on them and stuff, because you're in a big open area carrying a metal object. I mean, it's basically... On wet grass with metal cleats. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a recipe for disaster, and disaster found them. So yeah, that disaster uh, also found uh, close to a hundred homes that got their roofs lifted off by the tornadoes yeah. that we had from that storm, and yeah, yeah. tornadoes in Ontario. Two one a week after, two of them, one week after each other. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. Crazy weather, and yet every single day trip or photo day trip is beautiful. I don't get it. Bring it once. You're welcome. Yes, thank you, Gabriel. Oh, yes, for the for the no rain dances that you do. Yes, for the no and and also the rainbow dance. Well, the rainbow dance was a huge helper because that sure did make that uh, Niagara Falls look pretty. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I just, are you extra I for that? Punched it for our for our students. <laughs> yeah, no, no kidding. That and the lens pen, lens cloth, cleaning up everybody's cameras. There you go. For sure. Okay, thank you, Jordan, for the photo, and we're gonna move onward now. We've got a couple left to talk about. So, now this, to me, is the epitome of soft light. What do you think? Hold on a sec. Sorry. I was on a different... <laughs> yes. No, I... This one is... This is fantastic. This Explain is, why you think that. Well, it's beautifully isolated. Um, you know, you can't see any detail in the back. So it's, um, uh, and you can tell, I mean, the, the lighting, this is how you would light people in real life. The lighting is not overwhelming. It, it, it um, contours the, the shapes. So, uh, you know, you've got the shadowing in the spine and the fingers and the buttocks going down the legs. So all the curves are accentuated by the, by the light, which is exactly what you want the light to do. The light adds the emotion, the light adds the contrast, and, and it's just it's perfectly done in this in such a way that you're not distracted by anything in the background whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm distracted by one thing in the, in the background. There's a sudden change in brightness from the, uh, which is the bottom part going up in, on the back wall, like the, back, uh, the backdrop that she has. There's an actual defined line oh, yeah. across... Is there? Yeah. You can see that. I cannot see that. It's along the bottom left. Yeah. I can follow right across. Oh, okay. Okay. You know what? <coughs> on my um, calibrated monitor, that doesn't show. But on my non-calibrated monitor, you're right. I, I can see that there. I think it's just because most monitors are set brighter um, than they're supposed to be. And so it, it sort of pops the, the blacks to a level that uh, they're not supposed to be shown. You're right. That is distracting. I take back everything I said about this picture. <laughs> no, I take everything back. That's the only thing because you're right with the, the lighting otherwise. That, that's, like, it's beautifully done. Yeah. Just, I just want the black to be matching shape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picky. Yeah, it's one thing about uh, when people say that uh, you know they'll they'll edit a picture and then they go to print it, and it's uh, a lot darker than it was on the screen. 
most screens come out of the box, most monitors come out of the box in their advertising mode, which means they have everything cranked way up. Yeah. And when you actually color calibrate your monitor, you, you get all done, and you're like, all right, it's calibrated, it's in. It's, oh, it looks like crap. Yeah. <laughs> it's duller, and it's darker, and it's closer to reality. But we're used to everything being bright and vivid and popping. Yeah. So I have one monitor perfectly calibrated and one monitor set on, you know, how my customers are going to see the image. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, that is an interesting idea. And thing, about, like, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say one thing I like about this image was the fact that the size, the sizing of the photo, makes the people seem proper sized. Like I have no idea how big or small this thing is. Mm -hmm. they, it could be life size. It could be you know three inches tall. I have no idea, but the photo makes it look like they're properly proportioned. Like it, it's not like you know huge amount of space above. You know, it just looks like a natural photo of three women. Yeah, there's really no reference of size. <clears throat> Yeah. Mm -hmm. That feels natural. Isolated. <laughs> All right. And there is one photo remaining. So this is Chris's photo. She says, um, this is Charlie the chicken, <laughs> one of the little chicks that hatched in March. She shared some of the pictures of these chicks before. Uh, took this shot of him tonight in the soft overcast light. And again, that's using natural diffuser, right? Using the clouds. It's a, as Gabriel said, it's a very positive or um, very strong theme this week as everybody's using the clouds to soften the light for us. Um, I want to see pictures of bacon. <laughs> and Chris, I got to say, uh, for those of you who don't know, Chris's dog, Bacon, um, is a, a cute, cute little bulldog. And she always posts, posts pictures of, like bacon and eggs, uh, BLT, things like that. Well, if you have, if you've been wondering where bacon's been, um, poor bacon has been eating the linens and had a, had to have surgery because it got all infected. It ate all kinds of um, edging off of some some material, and it got all bunged up in his system. And the poor little guy had to go for surgery, and he's he almost didn't make it. <laughs> It's like big, so big deal. Bacon ain't that bright. <laughs> Bacon's a bulldog. <laughs> I think it goes without saying. Uh, they know, eat just about everything. It's got a picture of a pig, and it says, "What's my superpower? I turn vegetables into bacon. What's yours?" <laughs> <laughs> oh well, unfortunately, bacon's not necessarily uh, uh, turning anything into anything these days. But uh, I hope he's okay. I hope Bacon's okay. Well, she just posted. She says he is almost ready for another shoot. Well, that's good. good. And the Ooh. first shoot that you come back with Bacon, I can't wait to see it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So anyway, here's her photo for this week, who happens to be Charlie, not Bacon, Charlie the Chicken. And uh, anything to say about this there, guys? Nice sharpness. Yeah, I just love it. The, the lighting <laughs> going across the... Like, it's very even and such. The, even going into the mouth and such, it's... You know, you can see the the shade you're going, the, the shadow going into the mouth and stuff. Definitely. Oh, the detail on feathers. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, yeah, uh, pretty close and personal to a chicken to to get that, and then you know, like the with your GoPro, with the we found out that bro, GoPros don't taste good to birds. <laughs> so close enough to get a little peck there. <laughs> that was awesome, and that's on the video. Um, I wish I had that on video. Oh, I do. Ha oh, I what? I do have it on video. No, I was just I was I was trying to get my camera into video mode to to record it from a few feet away. Except I had like the five hundred millimeter lens on there. <laughs> yeah. So I had it on the in the video mode. The minimum focal distance for that lens is like fifty feet. And <laughs> I had to like keep running back. And by the time I got far enough back, it was over. I think it's impressive that you were using that 500 mil f6.3 inside Bird Kingdom, walking around with that thing all day. It was great. Yeah, your shots turned out okay. Yeah, actually they did. I've been I've been jonesing to get to them and, and edit them, but I've just been, like I said, I've been I've been so overwhelmed with fantastic, you know, wonderfully overwhelmed with work the last few days. Um, I love me some billable hours. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to see those. All right, well, yeah. so back to our photo challenge. Um, as we've been going through the photos this week, 
Uh, in the background, Gabriel, Blake, and I have been trying to pick our top three photos. And, you know, once again, great shots this week. It's really tough to pick the winners. And we we kind of all have different picks. We're all over the place. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, we're, we usually tend to compromise when we when we have picks all over the place. So, well, we only um, don't have one winner this week, so... Well, yeah, it's only going to be one major, one prize winner this week. <laughs> But ultimately, we're, we're going to mention the top three. Wow, 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 wow. All right. That's so weird. before we get to that, Luis just posts, Hi, I just got home from work. Watched the beginning of the show on the train from my iPhone. By the way, my lamp was on the top of the lampshade, was not covered with paper. Uh, was on, uh-huh. Oh, and the top of the lampshade was not covered with paper. Oh, good, good. So there, you were thinking safety. Safety first. <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Luis, Thank for letting us... And, and not only that, but thank you for watching, you know, on your way home from work on your iPad. I mean, that's pretty pretty freaking cool, if you ask me. Thank you. That's diehard. All right. For that, I think you've just bumped up in my listings here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> All right. Uh, there'll be a special prize for Louise. All right. So what do we think? Do you guys agree with my last post that I made there? Uh, I'm, I'm with it. Um, yes. All right. Cool. So we're going to start with third place. Now, we don't have Darren, our sound man, with us today. So um, everybody just make noises like it's a drum roll. Ah, Ready? But they're just, they're, they're just sounds like you know somebody's stuck in a revolving door of some type. There we go. <laughs> I okay. thought you were going, ah, as a drum roll, but I, that's what made me laugh. All right, third place goes to Marjorie for her photo of where where did we have her photo there, Blake? Can you pull it up? I have it up. There, oh, you have it up. <laughs> You're good at this, Blake. Very good job. Awesome. And okay, so first place, Marjorie, or third place, sorry, Marjorie. Second place goes to. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, Rhonda's photo. And I love this one just because of the light painting and the balance of the candlelight and the light painting. Uh, I thought this was a great photo. Rhonda, I got to say, you put a lot of thought into your photos. We had a conversation in the store about your spaceship photo that you posted a few weeks ago (laughs) and how you drove around trying to find light standards to take pictures of. And then you combined that with the picture of Colossus for the big alien in the middle and the picture of Canada's Wonderland and waiting for the right lighting. And you know what? Kudos. Very good work. And we really appreciate uh, all that effort you put into making photos for this time. Very cool. All right, and the first place prize goes to... <laughs> oh, this is too fun. <laughs> yes, Phyllis's photo with the excellent lighting. <laughs> Very good soft light. And I'm actually preferring Gabriel sound effects to Terrence right now. <laughs> This is pretty good. Uh oh. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna get a hook soon. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So thank you everybody for submitting your photos for the photo challenge this week. Very good work. Excellent. We love it. And for joining in the Q and A. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Is there anything else that we have to talk about this week? Oh yes, Blake. You wanted to mention something about a couple of events that are that's coming up. Yeah, uh, there's a few different things. Google Plus uh, is having their uh, yearly photo walk. Uh, Ron Clifford's running uh, this Saturday. Um, in August, I am actually running a photo booth up in uh, Coldwater, which is a ways north, about an hour, uh, about an hour's north of here, um, and for a steampunk festival. So if you like to see people that are dressed up in Victorian stuff where the world's energy sources come from steam instead of electricity. A lot of brass, a lot of really cool, uh, uh, a lot of cool images, and the town itself is just amazing. Um, definitely come on up; it'll be a hell of a day. There's also having um, something similar, like the Y Marsh is participating, bringing some animals and stuff coming through, and we got uh, we have a heritage museum up there and stuff. So, and when doing is that? that as well? Uh, August 9th. August 9th. The 8th is kind of like they're doing like a night thing where they're showing some movies and stuff like that. And the 9th will be a full day event with a costume contest and everything. Um, 
depending they have street vendors and last year they actually had a couple of people making like on site making jewelry and uh accessories and stuff like one guy was doing like bracer like wrist bracers and things like that which was really cool just uh they had a whole bunch of i think they actually had a blacksmith last year too so <laughs> Well, steampunk, uh, steampunk design in, in general is really interesting stuff. And when you mentioned this to me, I was like, yes, I want to go. And it's funny because on the 10th is our falconry day trip. We're having a Birds of Prey session <clears throat> on the 10th of August. And my mother, who's coming up from Florida for the month of August, will be on that. So if I can finagle possibly being off on that Saturday before the day trip, then I would love to come up and check that out and maybe bring my mom along. That would be a lot of fun. That would be incredibly awesome. And oh, and the other thing is the uh, if any of you guys follow me, uh, I'm in the Arcanum with uh, created by Trader Ackleff and a bunch of others. Uh, Ron Clifford's the master of my little cohort, and it's coming out of beta soon. So people who are looking to get themselves into learning photography from some of the best in the business and things like that, the the doors are opening from what I've been hearing and it's going to, uh, you know, there's a lot, lot of information that's going to be available and a lot of enhancements coming up down the road. But, yeah, it's not, it won't be in beta that much longer. It'll be open to public. And so the Arcanum is an online uh, kind of Dungeons and Dragons meets photography <laughs> kind of yeah. thing. Kind of Hobbit uh, meets, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's... I, <laughs> I would love to be a part of it. I've been talking with Ron myself about being a part of it. The time, I mean, it's a very serious situation. You don't just mess around with this Arcanum stuff. You guys spend a lot of time learning, inspiring, uh, shooting. Uh, you're meeting with a lot of uh, the other people in your cohort, you call it? Yep. Um, like um, Isabel and Stephanie and Marjorie, uh, Marjorie. and uh, Cheryl and Jennifer. All the um, time you guys are doing stuff together. Yeah. And it it definitely pushes you to learn. Now the nice thing is that it is learning at your own pace, so you can take it slower. But a lot of us are at the point where we're like, we want to go, 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 and it right. it pushes you to get through a few blocks. Uh, hmm. I know Marjorie was having a, a creative block on one of the levels. I went through a, a creative low for my well, not a creative low. I went through a I was not enjoying my photography. I don't. I was not enjoying picking up my camera. I was I remember that. going through that, and it was because of my cohort, the people I've been. I got to know Marjorie and Ron, especially. They both talked me through a lot of stuff, and it got me moving again, and it was great. Oh, um, sure, nothing I said helped. You know, <laughs> yeah. not, Ron not. actually. Ron actually mentioned one thing uh, to me that made. It, it's one of my normal reactions is when I run into a problem, I just fight my way through it. I don't give up. I just keep going and whatnot. And Ron said, you know, it's okay for you to put your camera down. And I just turned around like, no, it's not. This is something I love to do. It's not okay for me to put it down. And I just thought, I'm like, that's right. This is something I love to do. Why the hell am I thinking this? And Good point. It was just, well, like he told me one thing. I just, my mind just went, no, that's not okay. <laughs> and it, it was just, you know, as an eye opener, it's like, oh, crap, okay. Yeah, it's funny because one of the presentations I give on photography is what do you want from your photography? And one of the points that I make is you give yourself permission to take a step back. It's okay to put your camera down once in a while and just, you know, let things happen around you. And when you do go back to it, you have a different appreciation for it. So yeah, uh, was, you had a good reaction to that kind of a comment. You were basically like, no, I, this is what I love to do, so why overthink it? Let's just go have fun and, and do it. Yeah, because I was, I was. My issue was I was not enjoying it to the point where I wanted not to pick my camera up again. Mm -hmm. Like it was one of those things. Like it was, okay, this is. I was really scared of not wanting to take photo, like make photos anymore at all. So I just, you know, that was one thing that made me remember. Is like, no, I I can't do this. I can't. Well, good for you. And it's nice having that support system to fall back on. And that's another reason why I really like the Day Tripper photo community. There's a lot of this camaraderie that goes on. Amazing. Amazing um, that way. So uh, although the Arcanum is a great resource, and if, if you'd like to get involved in that, um, then please go for it. Uh, there is a, a lot of benefit to having that kind of environment. Keep in mind, the Day Tripper community is also available to you. 
Uh, yep. If you aren't part of the Day Tripper community already, join the Day Tripper community on Google+. And it's a private group, so if you want to share a photo, great. We will not reshare it. It's private. It's in there. Uh, if you have any questions, bounce them off our, our community members. We have about 200-plus members in the community right now, and everybody is really getting a benefit from it. And what I love is that these folks are coming on day trips and part of the community and part of the Arcanum. It's just blossoming. The The whole town of Newmark seems to be uh, absolutely thriving in the world of photography right now. So really, really cool stuff. I gotta say, one of the biggest things I found from Day Tripper was the fact that I actually got to go to places that I have been, where the Arcanum is all online learning for the, like 99% of it, and it's what you can where you can go out and learn stuff. We have people from all over the world in our um, my little cohort of 20 people, uh, anywhere from you know Newmarket all the way to Australia, um, but we can't get together and shoot together all the time. The day trips, you, Brian, you've taken me to some. Like some amazing places. Screaming Heads is like one of my favorite photos I've ever done. Mm -hmm. That's a great shot you have there from there. And that's you know that's one thing that's the biggest thing is you, what you guys teach and where you, the fact that you get us out there in these unique situations to put that into use right away. It's, mm -hmm. That's something you cannot overlook at all. I love it. One of the things that Day Tripper is best at, I believe, is taking folks who have a passion for photography and bringing them to neat places and giving them some little nuggets of knowledge to um, get them past some humps that they may come across. Uh, I love dealing with folks with little to no experience. To me, there's nothing better than seeing that light in someone's eyes when they, they get a concept and they make a great photo and they understand how they made it and they can reproduce it again. I love that part of Day Tripper. Um, there's also, you know, Darren comes along, and we've had Ross and Gabriel, who are advanced photographers and amazing educators and just really fun people to be around. So they can take people with um, the technical knowledge already and give them more tools and additional uh, resources for making better photos. And then, of course, we have folks like Blake who have been to the Arcanum and who've done all these other things as well who come along for the experience of it and the camaraderie of it, and going to a neat place to practice their skills that they're learning in all these other places. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, we talked about it earlier in the conversation, uh, Gabe, you mentioned it, and Blake as well, how we are not really the type of people to not want to give good information. We, we, we're not trying to hold that in as much as maybe some other folks will. Um, yeah. We're, I truly I'm... believe, sorry, I, I just truly believe that you can learn something from everybody. Mm -hmm. And whether it's Don Kamarechka or Ron Clifford or Blake or Gabriel or Darren or myself, we each have something different to offer. Uh, Ross Chevalier, um, you can learn something from so many different people, but you can always practice it on a day trip with Day Tripper. So very, very cool stuff. Sorry, Gabriel, what were you going to say? No, I was just – information is, is there to be spread, you know, and, and I mean, people are going to learn it anyways at one point or, or another maybe the way that that you teach it is the way that it'll sink in because I mean how many times have we been on a day trip and we'll just explain something in a in a certain way and those and, and they're just kind of lucky like oh my god I get it <laughs> yeah you know like yeah. I've heard that a thousand times but I get it now you know and and yeah I, don't know, I just I I spend a lot of time learning a lot of stuff from a lot of people and I want to share everything that I've learned. I mean, everything that we've learned has been usually from other people or a combination of other people, and I want to share, you know, what I've learned with other people. Yeah, and I think that's why I ask the people I ask to help out because we love to share. It's fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Marjorie says, the Arcanum experience is intense, very, very worthwhile. I believe that, and I am looking forward to being a part of it one day when I have enough time to dedicate to it, um, and I'm, yeah, I'm, bummed that I don't have the, the proper amount of time to to really put an effort into into being a master or whatever um, opportunity I would get within the Arcanum. But uh, one day, one day, if Henry's ever fires me or something, who knows, maybe <laughs> I'll have a lot more time open up. I could do stuff. Uh, don't jinx myself. I like it there. <laughs> um, and yes, Jack and Louise both congratulate you, Phyllis, for, for your photo, um, as we all do as well. Thank you so much for contributing. Okay, so the theme for next week's photo challenge. Um, since, uh, and thank you, Gabriel, great idea. Since we've just talked about uh, soft light, I think it's very fitting that we use the next theme, 
which a lot of people used to make the soft light. And that theme, if we have a sound effect for next week, yeah, we absolutely do. And the sound is effect is right here. Going to be that's called stalling. <laughs> Gilded stalling. Uh, the theme for next week is going to be clouds. There you go. Oh, hello. There's all kinds of sound effects now. Um, <laughs> I've actually wanted to do a whole series on clouds. I mean, sometimes the formations are beautiful. Very hard to shoot to make them look good, though, isn't it? So that'll be the challenge, is to make a photo with clouds that isn't just, hey, look, there's a blurry photo of a cloud. Please, no blurry photos of clouds. There's really no need for it in any world. Um, you having fun, Gabe? You on vacation now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, the creepiest thing is you, you have your clouds coming there, and every once in a while we see a, a little bit of the bald eagle beside you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you changing the effect level? Yeah. Or is it just pulsing? I'm changing the effect level. Okay. Well, a little <laughs> more. Just a little more. Brian, no, a little more. You haunt you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. It's, right. getting, it's getting late now. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for being on the show this week. Um, Gabriel, Anytime. my friend, thank you so much for putting up with the day from hell and then coming on to the show from hell and being a really uh, awesome part of the show tonight. Being the highlight of my day. Which I believe it has. Saying much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Louise. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, you got the dog barking with the doorbell. <laughs> you made the sound of the doorbell. Louise's dog went nuts. Oh. <laughs> You're to blame, Gabriel. It's all your fault. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Well, just keep the dog away from the toilet paper on your lamp, and everything will be fine. All right, Gabriel, where can folks hire you with, uh, for your amazing – I mean, come on. You just t totally saved an entire business from the brink of disaster – with your skills. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I my uh, so I have two passions, computers and photography, and they each help me out with with the other. Um, so computers is my more analytical side and the photography is my creative side. So if you want to hire me for either of those, um, you can reach me down bousquetphotography.ca along here. <laughs> um, Gabriel Bousquetphotography.ca and I guess I've never really plugged it before but if you're having computer problems um, Gabriel at PCTantrums.com so when your PC is giving you a temper tantrum call PC Tantrums so Gabriel at PCTantrums.com awesome, yes. thank you very much and I'm glad that uh, you're now home and safe with your wife and your lovely son mm -hmm. and you don't have to stress about the day. It's over. It's just like after all that and then you walk out and it's like raining and you're parked three blocks away and you're like, really? And then, of course, you're running down and you get a soaker, right? And you like splash one foot and it gets all soaked and it splashes water on the other and you can feel it slowly dripping down in your shoe and you're just like, FML. <laughs> <laughs> FML. We are living in a scary world. All right, Blake, where can people get a hold of you? Uh, if you're looking for any uh, more creative portraits and such, uh, myself, Isabel, and Stephanie, uh, we have our serve coming up and running. Uh, Six cents photo right That's down a big there. Finger, dude. That is a huge finger. There you go. <laughs> Speaking of huge fingers, how's your hand doing? <laughs> um, actually, it's mostly healed. Wow. Explain what happened there. Um, all right. I was in a really big rush. Uh, I was just getting my... Uh, I hadn't eaten all day. I grabbed my kid. had a, a, uh, a friend and her son. Uh, so our kids were having a play date. Rushing back to go to my house. And um, we were going to have lunch. I was bringing my sword out from the car. And I was like, okay. You know, my kid's like, oh, I want to see. So being in the rush that I am, it's the first time I ever actually had the blade turned in and went to open the sword. So, yeah, my thumb went slice and it was nicely gashed. So oh. off to the hospital I went before I could get any food. Six stitches later. <laughs> okay, and, and talk about being diehard. Yeah, Gabriel, you had a rough day today. So here's what Blake did. He <laughs> went to the hospital, uh, got stitched up, couldn't eat anything, and right after the hospital came, pretty much straight to shooting PWE, 
um, where by the end of the mm-hmm. day, you could literally see how heavy his and hot his hand was. Every two seconds, he was shaking his hand. You could see it hurt, and Blake's powering his way through it to shoot the wrestling. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Uh, like he was in the hospital for a self-inflicted sword wound. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Completely, and that's why I was still out there. I just kept going. Not a self-inflicted <laughs> sword wound. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm not saying Blake's the smartest guy around, but <laughs> he's sort of dedicated, and I love it. He is literally the only person I know that I can say the phrase "self-inflicted sword wound" to. Hey. And have it mean something? <laughs> you know. Here's the thing. I shot PWE that night. I turned. Like, I posted up a comment. I'm like, I shot PWE that night. I sh- did a photo shoot the next day with my thumb the way it was. And I'm like, you know what? I, I posted up the same what I did. And everyone's just like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm still focusing on the fact that I still got my two shoots done. I'm I know. happy with it. And everyone's just like, who cares about the sword? I got my shoots done. And the wrestling shoot was insane because Blake had his hand pretty much cut off. And poor Sean Johnson was literally crooked like this. I mean, he's standing this way, his, his body's doing this, his back is all out, and it's me, Sean, and Blake shooting this whole entire wrestling. I, I was the only healthy one there. It was crazy. And you heard anyway. your back earlier in the week, too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I had to miss the, one of the shows for that. Anyway, um, wow, the sun is up there. Thanks, guys. Got some great ideas. Thank you, Jack. I'm glad that, uh, that we helped, and I'm glad that it was entertaining. I hope it was entertaining, and hopefully you'll be watching more regularly. All right, that's it for us tonight, guys. Uh, we're going to say goodnight because we all have lives, and it's oh, already 11 o'clock p.m. One quick thing. Oh, yes. One really quick thing. If you uh, like editing images and um, but don't have, like, Lightroom, or even if you do, I've been playing with this software more and more. Google just added a really cool functionality. Let me just turn on my screen sharing here. Um, ba, 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 ba. Just give me one second here. Marjorie says, Squirrels on the Beach. On the beach. I okay, don't know. Seen my, I don't. Uh, <laughs> Do we want to be on a beach and we're always squirreling? Oh, nice. I like that shot. My screen there? Yes. Okay. So Google just added, uh, let's say you take a picture like this. This was on my way to my first customers yesterday. And it was a nice foggy morning and had to pull over and get this picture. But it's not exactly what I want. So I can click on the edit button. And um, if you've never edited it inside Google+, it literally has the most powerful online editing tools of anything out there. So I'm going to add, um, I'm just going to go with drama. And let's see here. There's different filters in, in the online Google+, than there is in the app. Uh, but I'm just going to go through a, different, a couple different filters here until I find something that I... That I like. So I'm going to go with this. I'm going to click apply. And then I'm going to go to center focus. And I'm going to um, make uh, the edge brightness, going to bring it down a little bit, center brightness up a little bit. And I'm going to make the blur strength a little bit stronger. It's a little bit too much. And make that a little bit smaller so it adds some moodiness. So as you can see, I've added a couple effects to it already. And go in here, I'm going to bring up the sharpness and uh, do a selective edit uh, at a control point right here, and I'm going to make it a little bit brighter in there, and I'm going to bring down the saturation, actually bring up the saturation a little bit down there. So you can see it's pretty powerful editing stuff, and what they've added now is if you look down here in the corner, you can actually see it's almost like layers. Um, We're not layers, but like... It's a history. Yeah, it's a history. Yeah, like like you would get in in Lightroom, and you can go back and see how your images looked at certain phases. And if you like all the edit, and you can go in and edit individual, say okay details here. I mean, I want to actually add a little bit more sharpness, or I want it to be less sharp. So you can go back in different different stages and edit you know, what you did there, and then if you really like this effect and you want to add it to another image, you can just copy it, go to the other image, and paste all those effects into it. Wow. You can remove individual ones, 
uh, just by hitting the X there and it'll take it away. It's really, really powerful. And then, of course, if you're all done and you're not, you're not happy with the final image, you can just click on revert and it's, it's web-based, browser done, non-destructive editing. At any time, you can just click on revert and you're back to your original image. That's pretty cool. It's really, really, really cool. So, so next time, talk about this at the beginning of the show because a lot of people have already left and they've missed a really good part. All right. Well, maybe I'll maybe I'll make a post about it or something like that. Sure. But it's, and uh, Louise I mean, says, and it's non-destructive, which you just mentioned. And yeah. what non-destructive means is? Is that any time you can go back and get back to your original image. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah, it, the, the edits that you're making are layers on top of your original image. They're not actually editing your original image. And as you can see, you can get rid of those layers. You can modify those layers. So it's basically like really Nick meets powerful. Lightroom and easier to use. Yeah. Yeah. Very I cool. mean, I've been, and, and I created a few different versions of that picture, and I've been really, really happy with them. So I guess this is a, a good reason to upload full resolution photos, though. Mm -hmm. I do that anyways. Yeah, so it, it's um, you know you can edit it right from your phone and then post them up to Facebook or Google Plus or Instagram or whatever right from there. And it's, it's, so it's these tools editing. are available on the phone and on the computer. Um, you can edit on your phone. I'm not sure if the non-destructive. I know non-destructive editing is available on your phone and tablet, but I don't know about like the whole layer thing. I'll have to look into that. Very, very, very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. Okay. Well, that's pretty much it for the show, guys. If anybody wants to come on a day trip with Day Tripper, uh, you've got myself, Gabriel, and of course Darren, who isn't with us right now as our main instructors, and we've brought in very many other talented, super amazing photographers to help out um, on other sessions. And we've got some other news that's coming up shortly. Uh, we can't get too much into it right away, but the Day Tripper Academy is going to be doing some changes, and a lot of people are going to get the benefit from this. So keep your ears tuned to that. And don't forget the theme for this week is clouds. So get out there and make some... What's that? Clouds. Clouds, yes. And my head is usually up there, so it should be easy for me. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Blake. And thank you, Darren, who's not with us right now, but I'm sure we will see you soon. All right. Anything else to add before I click stop broadcast, guys? No. Okay, cool. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. We'll see you all later. Take care.